hey, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Of course, I'd love to have you subscribe. And we are continuing our series, started it last week. Um, the series is called Growing in Christ. And to look at this series, we're using, using Ephesians 4, verses 20 through 24. Last week, we looked at one of the verbs in these verses. The first verb was the verb to learn. And so the idea of that is that we stay in continual student mode, that we're always learning. No matter how old you are, how young you are, no matter how much you know Jesus, um, that we're continually growing and learning and have that mindset that I'm in perpetual student mode. The second verb I want us to look at, we read about in verse 22. And this is what it says, um, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self. This word lay aside is uh, the Greek word, I'm gonna make sure I say it right, apothesi, apothesi, you're like, maybe, that's right, but it means to put aside. And Jesus is talking to us through Paul in this verse saying, you have an old man. And you're like, no, I don't. Uh, you do. You have a person who was the old person, the unregenerated, the former way of living. Before you met Jesus, before Jesus came into your life, um, there's stuff in your past and behaviors and mindsets that were your old person, the old man. And he says to put aside, to lay aside the old man. And it's a really interesting word, take off, lay down, uh, lay aside, set aside to put away the old man. But he also says in verse 24, to put on the new self. So this is, and this is the word in the Greek, endusei. And it means, enduseo, it means to like to put on clothes. So there's this idea of there's an old person, your former way of living, that you put that off. You take that off and you put on the new self. When you receive Jesus in your heart, he becomes part of your life, that there is a regeneration, your new self, the new identity, the divine design. This is the new person and you put this one on. So you put off and you put on. And I love this because I think it's a very powerful illustration for us to think about because I don't know about you, but there are times in my life that I absolutely find myself kind of reverting, going back to old mindsets, old behaviors, old thoughts, old ideas. And some of that can come from um, trauma. <laughs> trauma in our past can influence our present. And that's a really powerful truth. If you haven't been aware of that, you might want to think about and consider what is some of the trauma that I might have had that influences me today. And sometimes as well, there's things that our parents have done, our teachers have done, maybe some siblings, maybe somebody down the street, a neighbor across, across the way, that old things, stuff that has happened, that has accumulated, that, is, that has influenced our soul. And some of that is, that can be arrogance, that can be insecurity, that can be um, fear, that can be uh, in, intimidation, that can be, you know, being in, all these, all that stuff, that can be old man. And there are times in our lives, we have Jesus in our hearts, we have Jesus in our, renewed in our mind, we're gonna get into that in a little bit. But this old man, when I behave according to the old man, then I'm, I, I am not putting on the new self. And there are times when I say, oh, that's, that's the old Sarah. That's Sarah when she was, was, you know, struggling with these things. That's Sarah when she's living in, in those words from that teacher who said yucky stuff to her. That's Sarah um, when she called her friend every single day to come over and play after school and the friend always said no. That's the rejection. That's, that's the old Sarah. But the new Sarah, this is a different person. I don't have to live in that old Sarah, that old self. I put off and I put on new, the new self. Now, here's the thing. 
if we only and new meaning I do the right things, I have a better attitude, I'm secure in Christ, I'm confident, I have integrity and honor and nobility, and I have strength in my soul and and all you know all that stuff, which is great and and confidence, security in Christ, I know I'm loved and that whole better my best self, if you will. But if we're not careful. Sometimes I think we get into this, this mindset that Christianity is about changing our behaviors, right? Rejecting bad actions and behaviors and doing the right things. So it becomes behavior modification. And I don't know about you, but when I try to live in that mindset that I'm just going to change, change my behavior, I'll do the, I'll do, stop doing the wrong thing and start doing the right thing. If that's what this is, then there's not really this really core central pivot point of what it means to have Jesus in our lives. And if we only aim for behavior modification, stop doing, start doing, then we're really not any different than uh, most of the world's religions. It, it, it revolves around changing what we do. But I want to say to you that there's a very important verb that happens between put off and put on. In verse 22, Paul says, in your former way of life, put off. In verse 24, he says, put on. But there's a very pivot verse, pivot verb, I should say, in verse 23 that we're going to talk about next week that addresses not just behavior modifications, but is the real pivot point, what happens and how. Because I don't know about you, I have found that when I try to change, just change my behavior, um, that's tricky and difficult to sustain that and to make that like a permanent thing. Maybe you're better at me than that and that's fantastic, I would celebrate with you. But I have found that there's this real significant pivot verb between put off and put on that helps to tip the scale, if you will, towards putting on and also towards, so to speak, repelling or putting off. So I want you to listen carefully because next week we're going to talk about this pivot verb and what that is to help us move from putting off and to staying in putting on so that it's not just actions, but there's more to it than just actions. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing. Of course, hit the notification bell right there. And here's a question for you to think about because we're heading into, we're starting to come into summer a little bit. And so what is your favorite activity to do during the summer? What do you like to do? What's your favorite thing to do in the summer? And la la la, we have jokes, lots of jokes, right? You're like, oh my goodness, I have a whole boatload of jokes. <laughs> There's a big sale on rowing. Paddle, uh, sorry, there's a big sale on rowing paddles at my local store. It's quite an ordeal. Or, O A R, paddles, ordeal. <laughs> I know, we're like, rah, rah, rah. yep, but next week will be lots better. 